ओम ज्ञानतिरंधस्यानंजनशलाखया चक्षुर उन्मील ये नस्म श्रीगुरव नम नमो ओम विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति भक्तिवेदातस्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीयद्वैतगदाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो दिस इज द नेक्स्ट प्रेयर विच द लिविंग एंटिटी इन साइड द वूम ऑफ द मदर प्रेज टू द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड here <clears throat> the living entity who is praying is giving the important reason essential differences between him the living entity who has become embodied in this material body and the supreme lord who is worth to take surrender and if one surrenders unto him then the different kinds of problems the living entities undergoing can be completely mitigated this material world is created because of our desire to lord it over this is called adharma our original position of the living entity is eternally part and parcel of the supreme lord this is very essential because mayavadi's understanding is different they think we have become part only when we are materially contaminated when we become liberated we become one with him and absolutely there is no difference between him and me so we cannot justify this even though they give such a philosophy they cannot justify how the supreme became fragmented and how he joins once again because by nature there is no question of fragmentation of spirit krishna says that in bhagavad gita it cannot be cut so according to them the living entity becomes fragmented from the supreme lord in conditioned life and when once again he revives his consciousness he joins back and the example given by them is ghatakash patakash they say they say the two brahman become separated from each other by 
पॉट घटाकाश मीन्स द स्काई विच इज आउटसाइड एंड पटाकाश मीन्स द स्काई विच इज इनसाइड दैट पॉट सो इफ यू ब्रेक द वॉल ऑफ द पॉट बोथ ऑफ देम विल बिकम वन होमोजीनियस सो दिस इज देयर अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट बिकॉज ऑफ अविद्या that brahman has become fragmented and when once again that avidya is over the covering of avidya is over that means that wall is gone once again it becomes homogeneous now they cannot answer this first is how it becomes fragmented whereas krishna is saying it always existed like this krishna is saying mame vam sho jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sanatana they are my eternal part and parcel so this has to be understood properly we never become fragmented we are eternally the part and parcel of the supreme personality of god so this is a vague example given by them they think like this suppose if there is a paper and if this you compare it to complete brahman and you tear it into many parts then the original shape does not remain correct this paper does not remain as it is so this is the example they give for saying he is nirakar there is no akar is yes, so very very vague misunderstandings they have so they say this mistaking has to get over of course they also say certain group of impersonalist they say that actually brahman has not become fragmented but we consider it that we have become fragmented so this misunderstanding should be removed and then you realize you are never fragmented you are the same with the supreme lord this is another understanding some of the impersonalist view so some of them say we have become fragmented after realization we become one with them one with the same brahman so according to them there is one brahman and some parts have become fragmented once they realize they become reunited and it becomes homogeneous brahman once you become realized so when they are not able to explain then they say no it's not actually fragmented but because of avidya we think that we have we are separated from the supreme lord this avidya you remove you find actually there was nothing like you were fragmented from god you were always god so this is their understanding so we have to understand all these things very very clearly they cannot answer brahman means full of knowledge so if you are saying brahman can become covered with ignorance then looks like maya or avidya or ignorance is more powerful than brahman you see if somebody can cover brahman also something can cover brahman his knowledge and he suffers 
because of that avidya if brahman is suffering because of avidya that means avidya is more superior that it can cover brahman also so can you imagine what do they answer for this so when they are asked like this they answer it is leela of brahman it is leela of brahman that i suffer and when i become liberated i enjoy so this is there so prabhupad used to say okay if that is your leela then let me kick you on your face and you enjoy that kicking very nicely so you can see you know what kind of understanding this impersonalist has here we can see prabhupad is explaining very clearly the understanding so according to them you will find the object and the subject there is no difference it is only temporarily there is difference suppose our object is the supreme personality of god and we are subject we are praying to the supreme lord so for them this prayer this phase is temporary because i am covered by ignorance when i surrender to that supreme brahman i will come out and then i also become one with him this is their understanding so it's not a real sense of surrender to the supreme lord because he is thinking i am that supreme lord somehow by whatever arrangement now i have become covered by maya and when i surrender to that uncontaminated brahman i some portion has become contaminated when i surrender to that uncontaminated one i will be released and then i become one with him so after that there is nothing like that i have to pray to someone this praying is a temporary phase this bhakti is a temporary phase and then according to them they say that actually everything is brahman so you can pray to anyone you can pray to indra you can pray to any of the devatas and you can pray to you know you can pray to hari you can pray to shiva durga does not matter provided you consider that yes this is brahman because according to them they say there is sarvam khalau idam brahman if everything is brahman then i can pray to anything and that is brahman you see this is their philosophy so recently somebody had sent me a small clip so of some famous baba in vrindavan he was saying that the same god becomes mahatma and the same brahman becomes duratma there is no difference and he is considered to be a great devotee is considered to be a great devotee imagine how people do not see what is his real understanding so according to him that same god only becomes a dog same god becomes a duratma so he saying you it depends on your uh, shraddha if you have shraddha and with shraddha you pray even to your parents you will be liberated considering them to be brahman and he is giving the example 
that vithala you know in if you go to pandarpur the lord is standing because uh, the devotee who was praying to the lord he was busy serving his parents and he told the lord please wait for some time till i finish serving my parents so the example is given they are concocting this as so he prayed to his parents and still he became liberated can you imagine what kind of gross misunderstanding so he has chosen he may be saying i am a servant of radharani and somebody else may become servant of his father somebody can become servant of his mother somebody can he even says you can become servant of even a non living object even that is brahman i don't know what one one example he gave some example that his guru told him you worship this object as god and by worshiping that object he realized god and then he is quoting sarvam khalau idam brahman because everything is brahman so this is a gross misunderstanding of sarvam khalau idam brahman you see prabhupad gives an example you can call a king and there is no doubt king means automatically his kingdom king means automatically he has a queen king means he has his subject king means so many other things the moment you say king automatically does it mean without kingdom he is a king so king conveys the whole understanding and even though king means with his subject with everything else still king keeps his separate individuality this is the understanding so absolute truth includes everything there is no doubt about it there is nothing which is not included in the absolute truth if i say i exist separate from the absolute truth it is maya it's a fact nothing can exist without absolute truth without being connected to it so absolute truth definitely we have to understand means the supreme lord his different part and parcels his energies everything you see this like when we say panch tatva we find everything the supreme lord his marginal energy his internal energy his expansion and that is called as absolute truth but still the supreme lord keeps his individuality so this has to be understood because otherwise there is no question of devotion imagine if hanuman is having a devotion to lord rama and one fine day he is worshiping him with the idea that one day i am going to become rama where is the question of devotion where is the devotion isn't it so this they cannot understand that is why here you can see such a clear distinction 
the living entities praying very beautiful prabhupada has very nicely described what this living entity is praying so he is saying <clears throat> i am separated from supreme lord rahitaha that i have become separated from him because of my being in this material body made of five element panch bhuta rachite because i have entered into this panch bhuta rachite this sharira which is made up of panch bhuta because of this i have become separated from the supreme lord otherwise actually i am his part and parcel so this covering is a temporary covering just because maya has covered the living entity does not mean that he is no more a part and parcel he is still part and parcel but in diseased condition my hand even if it is diseased it is still my part and parcel so then he is saying my qualities and senses are being misused ayatha ayatha means unfittingly misused my quality my guna and my senses are actually meant for some other purpose but now because i have entered into this matter i have entered into this material body it is being misused now for sense enjoyment ayatha indriya guna artha now it is being used for sense enjoyment and then although i am essentially spiritual chidatmakam maham actually the spirit soul is spiritual but it has entered into this material body and when it has entered into the material body it is influenced by the environment of material body and it is acting based on whatever different kind of body he gets he gets a dog body <clears throat> then his senses are acting like dog he gets a human body he is behaving like a human being it is just like when a ghost haunts you you don't act originally like yourself you act like somebody else so similarly maya means we have become ghostly haunted that is the meaning that means our original guna our original senses now they are misutilized in something else earlier they were serving the supreme lord earlier our gunas were qualitatively one with the supreme lord now it is become influenced by three modes we were also satchidananda being influenced now by maya with this material body i am thinking i am this body one day i will be born one day i will die and so much fear we are having isn't it imagine actually we are we have no birth and we have no death but we have become so influenced anything happens to this body we become so much you know worried this shows how much influence three modes of material nature is having we were seeing the example of indra same indra occupying the post of uh, swarga loka and the same indra when he is occupying the post of a pig when he entered into the body of a pig completely forgot his all his position and being as indra he has become so much influenced by the body of the pig 
that he does not want to leave that body and even go to higher planet so this is our situation in the material world that originally actually we are essentially spiritual but now because of this pancha bhuta rachite i have entered into this my senses my gunas completely misutilized and then the living entity is saying on the other hand <clears throat> because the supreme personality of god had is transcendental to material nature and to the living entities see this is very important both living entity as well as prakriti are his energies one of them the living entity is para prakriti he is transcendental but it has become subjected to the control of prakriti that apara prakriti is controlling him but what is the position of the supreme lord so here the word which is used for one prakriti is prakriti and another word which is used for the living entity is purushayoho because he has come to enjoy in this material world he is called purusha so the supreme lord is param prakriti purushayoho he is above both of them he is transcendental to both of them and that is why the living entity is saying that i am praying to him he is not like one of me who has entered into this material body and he is also influenced by three modes of material nature he is para to both the living entity and the prakriti and then tena avikuntha mahimanam because he is devoid of such a material body tena tena means this kind of material body prabhupa translates that so he is devoid of this kind of material body avikuntha mahimanam his glories are not obscured just because he is present in this material body because he has no material body and even though he has also come along with the living entity in the same material body his glories are not obscured he is not influenced he has not become a living entity just because he has entered into this material body you see so this mayavadis cannot understand that is why they say that even when god incarnates that brahman when he incarnates he incarnates only in sattva guna he is also not transcendental because then they cannot differentiate i am not transcendental i am in material body so according to them anyone in material body is not transcendental so how can god be transcendental he is also having two hand two legs only thing they say is he is in he is influenced by sattva guna he has taken that form of sattva guna so that means krishna when he came he has taken the form of sattva guna otherwise he is also influenced he also has to take birth he also has to die one day so according to them actually their their commentaries on bhagavad gita their commentaries on this thing is all useless because what is the use of reading Uh, somebody in sattva guna okay krishna may be in sattva guna his philosophy what is the, what is so great about that they are it so this is the misunderstanding they have so here the living entity is saying that no the supreme lord even though he may be present even in this material body his glories are never obscured just because of the presence of 
So very nicely Prabhupada is saying, I'll just read that paragraph, how the Supreme Lord tries transcendental to Prakriti. <coughs> Since the identity, sorry, here it is. <clears throat> when the living entity is put into the material nature, his senses and qualities are polluted or designated. There is no possibility for the Supreme Lord to become embodied by material qualities or material senses. For he is above the influence of material nature. That is what it is said. He is Param and cannot possibly be put in the darkness of ignorance like the living entities. And then another word which is used is uh, uh, completely knowledgeable, filled with knowledge. What is that word used? Anyone can see that? Rishim. Rishim, Prabhupada is translating that as completely knowledgeable. Because of his full knowledge, he is never subjected to the influence of material nature. Material nature is always under his control and therefore it is not possible that material nature can control the Supreme Personality of Godhead. What is the verse in Bhagavad Gita where Krishna says, That material nature is under me. Maya dhyakshena prakrite suyate sacharachara. So very clearly Krishna says that material nature is working under him, under his control. So this cannot control the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then in final, the conclusion Prabhupada is giving is that this process of devotional service is actually meant to release the living entity from the influence of Maya, influence of this material body and place him back in his original position as part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of God. That is the meaning of devotional service. So the entire process of devotional service is to purify oneself of this contamination of material nature and put oneself on the spiritual platform where he is qualitatively one with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then Prabhupada is giving that verse from the Vedic literature, Asango hi ayam purushaha, that actually the living entity is always transcendental to modes of material nature. It is only a temporary covering. So, in reality, it is not that uh, the living entity, his quality becomes changed. It is not that. Asango means actually it can never mix. Prabhupada gives the example, matter and spirit is like kerosene and water. They don't mix. It may stay for some time. Similarly, this avidya may stay for some time. We are still part and parcel. We still have our original nature. It is just covered for the time being by maya. So we become once again placed in our original quality as part and parcel not in quantity. So this is a very essential difference we have to understand. Qualitatively we become one with God, not quantitatively. And that is the reason we are subjected to fall down. Because quantitatively we are different from God. And that is why the famous example Prabhupada gives, so many examples Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given. To make us understand, Krishna is like the big fire, we are like the spark of that fire. Krishna is like the ocean, we are like the small drop of that ocean. Krishna is like the gold mine, we are like the small 
ornament made up of that mind qualitatively it is same but quantitatively there is difference so this we have to understand so we'll stop with this granth raj shrimad bhagavatam ki jay jagat guru shila prabhupada ki